All right, Buck fans, welcome back. No quarter given podcast. I'm Jason. Hopefully, you enjoyed Peter and I's breakdown of the bad New Orleans game, which we're and we're going to get to the preview of the Carolina Panthers here in a must win, win and get in game. But before we get to that, we are going to bring in Buccaneer Radio sideline guy, guy you all know and love. You hear him every week on the sidelines, along with me, Gene, and Dave Moore. Mr. T.J. Reeves, welcome. Happy New Year, sir. Happy New Year to you. And I should shout out to the audience here on No Quarter Given. We love the nostalgia. We love everything that Jason and I are about to talk about. But Mr. Power is very versatile. Not only is the uh, host here on No Quarter Given, co-host with Peter, uh, but also does a fantastic job in other roles, podcast hope, uh, host, analyst roles, but even doing stats and spotting with me on the Relia Quest Bowl, the former Outback Bowl college football game, LSU and Wisconsin. We had a dandy game in the new year. The first, uh, we I keep joking, you and I two years in a row now have been involved, really three years in a row, have yeah. been involved in the first game of the calendar year. As I like to say, thousands of football games will be played in 2024 here, 2024, from the youth level to the high school level, to the college level, to the NFL and all the other leagues. And we did the first game in the Relia Quest Bowl. It is a it is a privilege here in Tampa, and LSU won the game. And you did a great job with the stats and the spotting. Public shout out, brother Powers, on the No Quarter Given podcast. Before no. we dive in head first on the Buccaneers, you get the shout out. You were the man on the call. I was taking notes from. I was taking notes, no, notebook paper full of notes <laughs> from you, all that kind of good stuff. No, you did a fantastic job on the game. And again, we had a good game, so that made it nice. As it, yes. And I'm sorry I didn't get the stat for you. I know at the end. You keep beating yourself up. I, I, that, I looked through I, the book what? and I couldn't find it you through the Relax Quest LSU, record book. LSU went on a 98-yard drive to take the lead. I'm going to go ahead game. and call it the record. Until win somebody it. else disproves us, That's we're right. going to call it the record as the 98-yard drive for LSU to win the game. <laughs> you were looking for it feverishly in the stats. <laughs> uh, but it's good. It's all good. And we had a blast with that. And now – and now we got Buccaneers and Panthers uh, coming up. Winner take all situation for the NFC South for the Bucs. Obviously, Atlanta and New Orleans need the help of a Buccaneer loss, but you got you got so much drama coming into this weekend. There's no doubt. So win and get in for the Buccaneers, like we've mentioned. There's also a tie scenario, which we're going to get into in just a few minutes. Yep. That a potential tie in the game, <laughs> along with something some other help, could get the right. Buccaneers in the division in the playoffs as well. But before we get to that, this, we get to this, this pod, this pod is yes. always about the nostalgia and buckpower.com. Yes. And you're going to love this folks about nostalgia with ties and almost ties and the Buccaneers and when to get in. You're going to love it. I'm just teasing that. Go ahead. Yes. Before we get to that, let's, let's get a little on the field news before we get going. News obviously is we're recording this on a Wednesday night. And as of Wednesday, Baker Mayfield did not practice on Wednesday doesn't look great that he's probably going to practice Thursday. Friday's, to me, the important day, TJ. As you know, the NFL calendar, if guys don't practice Friday, that's usually not a great sign to play Sunday. You know, you're hearing positive things out of Baker. I'm going to try to play, and I'm man he's got a rib injury, going to manage the pain. But Kyle Trask is getting these important reps in practice. Talk about what your thought of if you got to play Kyle Trask Sunday do, or, or if there's a, dis, a, a, a debate, do you start Kyle Trask and have Baker Mayfield in relief, or do you potentially start Baker Mayfield, see how it goes for a quarter, and maybe go to Kyle Trask? It's a great debate uh, about what do you do, and the, the real question is how effective can he be for how long, and we don't know that answer. So let's say you want to start him, and with the miracle of modern medicine and, and a needle, and a needle, and a needle <laughs> Okay, here's what we know about the needle, though. The needle only lasts so long, and they can right. only give you so much of the stuff. So to your point, do you give him the painkiller that we're talking about and see if he can play the first half and how effective is he? Or do you go ahead and wait and see what does Kyle Trask look like in the first half, and then Baker maybe gets the painkiller at halftime to play the second half of the game? Uh, again, I'm not a doctor. I don't have any inside knowledge, despite right. my role on how bad this is. Uh, but I would have to believe he had a flak jacket on. He he was talking openly like it's probably a broken rib. Now, let's distinguish this while we play doctors. 
there are different levels of broken ribs where it can be just slightly broken. The rib cartilage, et cetera, can be slightly broken. We're not talking about a rib that's cracked open, sticking out, and is punctured along. You can't play with that, right. obviously. You can't walk. You're in the hospital when that happens. Uh, so he's not in the hospital. So there's a chance that he's going to be able to tape it up, take a shot, and be able to play. And again, we're just speculating on how serious it is. It may be that he practices on a limited basis, and then he tells them, hey, I can deal with the pain. I can make the throws. That's the other key thing, Jason. Can he make throws down the field with ribs bothering him, right? If he can't right. throw the ball on a line 20 yards down the field, if he can't throw a deep ball, if they need him to hit a deep ball because of you gotta his play ribs, trash. you got to play you're trash. almost like a liability. you got to play the third-year guy out of Florida because he can make the throws just while we have the debate. Yeah, I mean, it's a great question, If he, especially if he doesn't practice Friday. Do you put your all your marbles into a guy that hasn't thrown a ball all week into Sunday and, and it got to have a game? Or do you go to the guy who you've drafted with a second round draft pick? You think he can you think he can be serviceable? That's going to be a very interesting decision for the for the for the coaching staff, obviously in the front office and Todd Bowles come Sunday if there's a debate whether he can play or not. And they're doing the smart thing, and I know you want to move on. Give Trask some first team reps. Yeah. It's not the same thing as a game, but give him the first team reps in the event that you need him, because you're right. Here's one more factor that we don't want to contemplate. What happens if Baker Mayfield gets out there and a Carolina Panther falls on him or hits him again, and he's in agony and he says, I can't play after right. you have this plan to play him, then you got to go. Then you got to go with Kyle Trask. Let's let it play all out uh, here over the next 72 hours or so. Like you're saying, no one is going to know for sure what he looks like, how he can do until one o'clock Sunday when That's we right. see this. Uh, as much as he may talk up, I can do it. Uh, we we don't know. We don't know till we see it with the injured ribs. He's been playing with a bad shoulder. He's had an ankle problem. He's a gamer. Yep. Well, let's see what it looks like on Sunday. We won't know till Sunday. In the last roster thing, we'll move on. This brings into John Wolford into play too. You got to have give him a few reps this week, just in case. You never know because if Baker can't play, Wolford's got to be your backup, and you never know. You got to give him a few reps as well. You're just you're you're preaching the doomsday scenario, but what happens as you're suggesting if something happens to Kyle Trask? Right, and that's where you got to have at least some opportunity there uh, to have a third quarterback. So we'll see yeah. many different variables with this here, and we're early enough okay. where Wednesday Baker afternoon. could heal yeah. enough that maybe it's not going to be as big a concern. But we'll see. All right. Give me a quick thought on the lack of urgency by the Buccaneers against New Orleans. All the you you talked to the guys in the locker room post game. That seemed to be the sentiment as we just weren't as much into it as we needed to be as far as an urgency factor. And I just don't understand that. I don't understand how you're not ready to go. And Levante David saying on Buccaneers radio that uh, we weren't ready to go. I wasn't ready to go. I have never Jason heard him speak right. in those terms before. And maybe it just got infectious in the first quarter where. You know, one negative thing led to another. You're you're on your heels. You're not aggressive. The Saints are aggressive, but you got to snap out of that. In the second quarter of the game, you got to snap out of that, and they just never seem to be able to. And I I understand the concern as it morphs into this week that you better do some positive things in the first quarter, and you better get the lead in the first quarter because the chicken little situation, the sky is falling, starts taking effect. If you suddenly fall behind here again against Carolina, here we go again. That's not good. You don't even want to enter that scenario. But I, I don't know that we have an explanation. And at this point, you try to learn from the intensity part, the focus, the lock-in at the beginning of the game, do positive things at the beginning of the game, and you should be able to beat this Carolina team and then just move on. All right, so let's talk about some nostalgia in Buccaneer history. There's <laughs> only been a couple of times that we've been able to find, and you can confirm this yeah. at power.com, and we, we just yep. did some research before we started here tonight. A Bucks win and get in in the last game of the regular season. And That's I right. think you and I have only been able to identify two of them, and they go way where back. They did, where they did win in On the, the last they week of the season. They certainly have had a couple of opportunities to make the playoffs and didn't win. But in terms right. of need to win to get in, and they did win to get in. So I, I love Paul and his resource. So the, the, the most uh, famous one – uh, is obviously the 79 win and get in the three nothing game with Kansas City where I believe they had lost three in a row um, needing to win only one of the last two or three 
to get in. And it, and it was a three, nothing game in a monsoon against Kansas city. That was the final game of that regular season to get in the playoffs and beat the Eagles a couple of weeks later uh, in the divisional round of the playoffs. Was that, so Neil that was, O'Don- was that Neil O'Donohue with the correct. game winner? Neil O'Donohue with the only points. Neil O'Donohue, who still lives in the Tampa Bay area in Clearwater, Florida, is the hero from the 79 game with the only field goals. It was a chip shot, like 22 or 23-yard field goal. But in the old stadium, uh, with the downpour monsoon. of rain and the awful yeah. field and the monsoon, you only needed three points. So that was win and get in. But you're also preferential – uh, to uh, the game in the Silver Dome, 1981, the 16th and final game, the 10 and five Buccaneers, the 10 and five Detroit Lions, playing for the NFC Central title that day. That was also win and get in, my friend, for that day. And so, this, and that we had a Doug Williams to Kevin House bomb and the famed David Logan fumble return. David Logan, who then served in the Tampa Bay media market for many years on the on, on as, as a broadcaster. That's well, correct. I mean, again, that was one of the young, you were a couple years older than me, but I was a young eight-year-old at the time. <laughs> that was one of the first memories, big memories I had of the Buccaneers and some success. Yeah, Leroy on the sack. Logan picked it up and ran it in. And then the Doug Williams bomb to Kevin House, the 80-yard bomb, helped clinch that game. So that was win and get in. For the NFC Central title, get into the playoffs, uh, and then the and then the Bucks were on the road to play the Dallas Cowboys, yep. um, and end up uh, getting wiped out by the Dallas Cowboys two years in a row. The Cowboys beat the Buccaneers, uh, and so there have been other situations. I mean, for example, John Gruden's final four games: nine and three Buccaneers, two thousand and eight, didn't win any of the last four, right. and either one of the last two, right, the, the week. Uh, 16 game with the bye, the 15th game didn't win it. And then the week 17 game, the 16th game at home with the Raiders, the team he came from at home, didn't win that one either. That was win and get in right. to win a, a wild card spot and didn't get in. So there, there have been occasions where it hasn't worked out. That's, that's for sure on the final week of the season, but this is this is win and get in come Sunday against Carolina. We are for sure. providing the positive energy, the, the win and get in going into Sunday. All right. There is another scenario that I want to get. To. You've got a, you, you've got a good, if the bucks tie and a couple of other things happen, the bucks could then still get in as a wild as, as either the division winner or potentially or wild a wild card. card. Okay. So, so give, I really give me a story. I realize on the front end, this is a very unlikely scenario, but Buck fans, the, these are scenarios that you have to look at. There has not been a tie in the NFL this season, in the 2023 season that we've just uh, had the first 17 weeks of. So there's obviously 16 more games to play, but no ties as of yet. The Buccaneers only have one tie in their history. Again, buckpower.com, phenomenal resource. That is a 1980 game with Green Bay at home. Richard Batman Wood, the Batman had an interception return for a touchdown to help force overtime. The Green Bay kicker, which I do not believe was Jan Stenerud. We'd have to look it up. The Green Bay so. kicker missed a, a field goal late in the game and then missed a field goal in the overtime. And neither team scored in the overtime. And that is the only Buccaneer tie. That's still Doug Williams, obviously, second year with the team. That's Leroy Selman, uh, Bill Capice. Uh, the, those Buccaneers, uh, Ricky Bell, et cetera, yep. that's the only tie, and it came 44 seasons ago in 1980. <laughs> All right, so the Bucs have not had a tie. in. F- so we're saying the likelihood of this is minuscule. It's not likely to happen. But I'll but- say this. Three or four years ago, the Chargers and the Raiders were in overtime, and they the Chargers could have played for the tie and would have made the playoffs. And Staley, like the bozo that he was as the head coach, went for it when he shouldn't have. All he needed was a tie. That's they right. don't make it. The Raiders go down and kick a field goal and beat them and knock them out of the playoffs. So it's happened three it or four has. years ago. It ha- yes, good, good three years ago. It was actually it, three years ago. That's right. It is a good reference point that it could happen. Uh, and again, in the scenario, if the Bucks finish eight, eight, and one, the NFL has put that out there, and the Packers lose to the Chicago Bears and the Seahawks lose right. to the Arizona Cardinals, the Bucks will finish by a half game with a better record than Green Bay and a better record than the yeah. Seahawks at eight and nine, and they will get the seventh and final 
NFC spot, the third right. and final wild card in a tie. Now, if you want to get really crazy, <laughs> even in the event of a tie, the Bucs could still win the South if Atlanta ends up defeating New Orleans, where they're right. both eight and nine. A Falcon right. win makes the Falcons and the Saints eight and nine. A Buccaneer tie, tie at eight and eight. They're and in. One. They're in. They've won the <laughs> South with a tie. So it right. very expressly is in the playoff scenarios. Buccaneer tie, Saints loss, Buccaneers win the division. Now, again, obviously, if New Orleans wins, that's a ninth win. They've won right. the division right. if the Buccaneers tie. So certainly uh, not, not a likely thing. But here we go in the nostalgia. You want some nostalgia on the No Quarter Given Absolutely. podcast? All right. So let's go back to 2005. This is John Gruden. Uh, as the coach, this is Chris Sims, Joey Galloway, Mike Allstott on offense. Some guy named Derek Brooks, Brooks is Brooks the outstanding dude. linebacker. Uh, some other guy named Rondé Barber, now in the Hall of Fame, is in the secondary uh, still for the team. So this is the week 16 uh, of the NFL, 16-game schedule, 15th game of the season, being played on Saturday, Christmas Eve in Tampa. You can go back and look this up on buckpower.com. As well, Bucks and the Atlanta Falcons, two division games to end the year. This Michael and Vick. This is Michael Vick for Atlanta. By the way, uh, I'm trying to remember T.J. Duckett. I think was the probably running Ward back. Dunn. Probably Warwick, Ward Warwick Dunn. Dunn in Atlanta, uh, etc. All right, so Vick and the Falcons and the Chris Sims, Derek Brooks Buccaneers know that the winner is in the playoffs. The loser is practically out, and the winner is also in the driver's seat to win the division and have a home playoff game. So it was essentially win and get in. It was not the final game, but it was essentially win and get in. And how does this tie into, tie being the key word, how does this tie into a tie? Uh, Paul and I were going over this. I believe this is the next closest game in an overtime to a tie in Buccaneer history, December 24th. 2005 you want even more nostalgia tj wife and parents were in hawaii i'm doing usf basketball tournament in hawaii christmas <laughs> week <laughs> we flew on friday night december 23rd overnight from honolulu through dallas to tampa for this <laughs> playoff game <laughs> with my with my dallas plane landing at about 5 or 6 a.m local time in dallas saturday morning Dallas plane taking off at about 8 a.m. local time, about 9 a.m. Tampa time, landing in Tampa at 11 a.m. Eastern time, two hours before the game. So I have flown over 7,000 miles from Honolulu to Tampa to come be part of Buccaneers and this Christmas Eve afternoon game with Atlanta. Uh, and now the game goes into overtime. The game at the end of regulation uh, is obviously tied up. I can't remember. I, I believe the Falcons maybe had a chance to win the game and could not get into field goal range. So the game has gone to overtime. So the Falcons kick off and Edel Shepard, there's a name from the past, returner for the Bucks, fumbles the overtime opening kickoff at like his own 20 yard line. He's hit, he fumbles. I'm standing there on the sideline. This is my first year in the sideline role in the game broadcast going, oh, my God, they're going to blow this, and the season is basically over uh, here. Uh, and so the Falcons now work the ball to the middle of the field, do a kneel down, do a handoff, and they're going to kick the winning field goal to win this 15th game, be in the driver's seat to win the South, all but knock the Bucks out of the playoffs. And Dwayne White, remember that name, defensive lineman, Buccaneer Steve fans. White. Uh, Steve White. Uh, Steve. Steve White, yes, but do, there were two Whites. Dwayne White. Okay. Dwayne White is the guy that got the hand on the field goal from the Falcon kicker. Yeah. He blocks the field goal to keep the light game alive. All right. The Buccaneers move into scoring range, and Matt Bryant is the kicker for the Bucs in 2005, mm -hmm. and he misses the potential game-winning field goal, about a 40-yard kick. He misses in the overtime. So now we've got about seven or eight minutes left in overtime. The Falcons get the ball. They punt. The Bucks get the ball. They punt. Now there's like two minutes left in a 15 minute overtime. We're looming in a tie. We're all wondering on the air. Does a tie, who does the tie help? Right. We find out off the air on the radio, the tie helps the Buccaneers. 
In the event of the tie, the Bucs are in control of the destiny to be in the playoffs and win the division. This game also famous, as you remember, for Jason and the audience, where Jim Mora, then the coach, Jr., Jim Mora Jr., is on the flip cell phone with Rich <laughs> McKay, the new Falcon president. He'd been the Falcon president for a year or two. Up in the press box, illegally, on a cell phone. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to communicate with the outside What does world. the tie do for us? Yes, he's asking, does the tie help us or not? And Rich McKay relays to him, a tie does not help Atlanta. Wow. A tie helps the Buccaneers. So Jim Mora, for whatever reason, still punts the ball with like a minute left. The Bucs are using timeouts and punts the ball. And the Bucs get a long completion to Joey Galloway. I know this is a long story, but it ties in to the tie, to the whole tie thing. So uh, the long pass is completed to Galloway, and Matt Bryant kicks the field goal in the final seconds, in the 14-minute, 30-second range right. of sudden death overtime. Matt Bryant wins the game. The Bucs win the game in OT. And there you go with making the playoffs in the second to last game in a game that almost ended in a tie. Again, the Bucs have not had a tie since 1980. Wow. There was almost one in 2005, and there has not been one since right. while we're talking about ties. But I just thought I'd share the nostalgia. My friend, I was there and lived that and the happy postgame show afterwards when that field goal went through. Again, anything related to Buccaneer history, Buccaneer.com, oh. players, audio, stats, breakdown, scoring, all that kind of stuff. That's the place to go. Paul Stewart does an awesome job. Amazing at, job. And he allows us to do our do our thing here. All right. I'm just double checking. The field goal came with 15 seconds in overtime, courtesy of Buckpower.com. 1445 of overtime is wow. when Matt Bryant won this, that game. It was that remember, close to being a tie. Again, if he misses, if, 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 there's your second tie in Buck history, and it would have helped them make the playoffs in 05. And remember, Buck fans, we no longer play 15 minutes. We only play 10. That's so a couple of those possessions would have been nullified because of the 10 minute overtime. So, all right, let's get to Sunday. It's supposed to be nice weather, 55 degrees or so in Charlotte, no rain. Give me a couple keys to victory here for the Bucks of, of important points that you that you want to see coming off the lackluster performance last week. Four awful turnovers last week. Do not turn the ball over. Do not help them get the early lead. It is vital. Get out 7 nothing. Get out 10 nothing. demoralize them. If you give Carolina hope and confidence, that's trouble. So the fast start, don't turn it over. Uh, capitalize on red zone opportunities. Uh, when they are there, if they're there with touchdowns, not just field goals. Those are the three th biggest things that stand out. This is a team, we've joked, you're going to joke again here in a second. Have they checked out or not? I mean, you were using a line on another show earlier today about do you want Carolina's mentality to be what about first quarter, second quarter of this game? What do you want putting, it to be? Putting the luggage in the in the trunk and getting ready to go on vacation to the Caribbean. <laughs> I mean, That's seriously, right. these guys, I mean, if you if you get up 14 nothing middle of the first, second quarter, they're going to pack it in, thinking about not getting hurt, thinking about That's their right. contract. They're going to have a new coaching staff, so it's not like – That's right. I mean, so this is – this you can't let this team hang and around. they have nothing to play for with the draft pick. They lost – they gave away their number one pick right. in a trade to Chicago, so that's not relevant. As you mentioned, you're not playing for a head coach that's going to be back. So – uh, what are and this team is for? bad. They're bad they on all. Bad. They're the worst team. They're the worst team in the NFL. And if you can't take care of this, I, I agree with everybody else. You didn't deserve to be in the playoffs blowing right. this game, but let's not even go there. Let's talk about playing smart, playing aggressive, getting up a couple of scores. And then you're talking about winning the NFC South and you're playing a home playoff game here, Mr. Powers. Absolutely. absolutely. Looking like probably Philadelphia now, unless Dallas slips up on the banana peel, probably going to be a Philadelphia rematch. If you win the game, Again, it'd be interesting to see where, where where they get put that game as far as a TV as as far as is it a prime time game? Is it a Sunday one o'clock game? Let's worry about that later. But again, win the game on Sunday and you're in. It, that's that's the most likely scenario for the Bucks to make the playoffs. You don't want to be relying on other people losing. No. Win the game, you're in. You got you got the advantage. You got the you know you're the better team. Go do it. Go take care of business. This has been a very resilient team. Give Todd Bowles credit. He's played a lot of young guys. They've done a good job and they've had their ups and downs. 
but they've done really well the last five weeks of the, of the year, but you got to finish it off. And you know, you know this, but I'm going to repeat it one more time. This was supposed to, by a lot of people's reckoning, be a lost season, a three or four win season, an awful season. And if they can, and I believe they will finish this off with a ninth win and a playoff berth playing a game at home, that is a tremendous job all the way around by the coaching staff and these players because you don't accidentally win nine games in the NFL. Right. You can accidentally win three or four games like the Cardinals, some of the lesser teams, the Raiders, the lesser teams that are hanging around, the Jets, whatever. You can win three, four, five games. But you don't win a seventh game late, eighth game late, a ninth game late with it all riding on it if you're not at least decent or good. So give credit if they're able to finish this off on, on again, what was supposed to be a lost season. And I know you know that. And let's and, be talking about the playoffs next week. If we have a post-Christmas wish, let's be talking about the playoffs next week, please, and, Mr. Powers. And remember the Houston game they blew. They were the better team for most of that game. They could have had a 10th or 11th win, potentially, if you look at the schedule. Correct. But you got to win the game. This is the game. You, you had your clunker last week. You got another opportunity. You got to put you got to put the, the dagger in them and put them away early. All right, TJ, tell everybody where they can find out if, if you're not in the Tampa, if you're in the market, where they can listen to the broadcast. And if they're not sure. in the market, where they can listen. All right. So we're on the air on Buccaneers Radio at noon Eastern time. One Eastern time is the kick. You can find that locally in the Tampa Bay area, 98 Rock. There are affiliates over the air on the radio all over Florida, wherever you are, Orlando, Jacksonville, all over the state. Uh, to hear that the Buccaneers mobile app as well. You can hear us through that. You can hear us through Sirius XM, the NFL plus mobile app, Gene and Dave on the call. Let's let's go. But like you said, 1981 all over again, win and get in. That's the last time you took advantage of win and get in. Let's take advantage of it. Let's go bucks. All right. I don't think you're gonna have to pack too much of a, too much cold weather stuff, but maybe a little bit, maybe just to, What's the hey, I don't I don't care if I got to have five layers on. Uh, let's go. Let's go win the game. We had layers on in, in Lambeau and they played very well. Play like you did in Lambeau. And this is an easy Sunday because the, the, the Panthers, again, are ready to quit. So demoralize them, make them quit, get the win, go to the playoffs, brother. And if we have Buccaneer fans in the Carolina area, there might be more Buck fans than Panther fans. Go get the tickets. League. Go get tickets get in the region because there's going to be tickets for this game. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. All right, TJ Reeves, awesome job. Keep up the great work. We'll be ready for the playoff game next week. Enjoy your enjoy the flight. Be safe. And let's bring home a playoff berth in the division title. Great to be with you. Go Bucks. All right, we'll be back in just a minute or so. Peter and I will give our breakdown of the – we'll give a score update and a couple more points of emphasis for the Buccaneers as we go to Carolina to wrap up a division title. We'll be back in just a minute. 